is regarded Kim Jong Un fell apart. Chairman Kim promised me last night is regardless he's not going to do testing of rockets and uh, nuclear. Not going to do testing. So you know I trust him and uh, I take him at his word. I hope that's true. Is that trust deserved? Joining me now is NBC News national security and military reporter Courtney Kuby, part of the NBC team that broke the story, and Victor Cha, the director for Asian Affairs in President George W. Bush's National Security Council, and an MSNBC Korean Affairs analyst who did this work, the report on the symmetry uh, with his group at CSIS. Um, Victor, first to you, when you first saw this image, having tracked this dormant site, it had been dormant since August, now two days after the summit, this imagery, very clear imagery. What are you seeing here that alarms you? Well, so the first thing, Andrew, is to emphasize the first point is that, you know, you pull down images every day or every, every time you get a clear shot to see what's going on. And there was really nothing happening at this place since August. After Kim promised Trump after Singapore that he wasn't going to do anything there. And then so it's really striking that only a couple of days after the summit, we see this activity opening uh, environmental shelters, doing maintenance on the railway transport structure, uh, doing work on the engine uh, on the rocket test stand. These are very clearly not simply maintenance activities. They're either meant as part of a process to actually start stack. It's illegal for the mailman to run at your mailbox because there's nobody living there. You can no longer get your drugs from China over there. You can no longer get your drugs from China over there. Look at whatever you want to look at. So what? I got my shirt off. So what? I'm in my own home. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. We know who you're working for. You're working for the drug dealers in the in the county. Right? 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 The postmaster isn't going to run there no more. We're on to you, Ridgeway. Sick. These people are sick. I told, David and I told the court system that they was in sick and that they needed help. And I think it's not just the Ridgeway and the Sheffield family that's sick. But it's about a third or possibly half of the people here in Weekly County, including the Federal Post Master Service that's been running empty, void mail there for, for uh, the past three or four years since I've been here. Look at him wallowing around in his mud hole. Wallowing around in his mud hole. He caught me in the middle of filming. And I'm over here shaving, so I do have my shirt off, which is... Kind of unbeknownst to me that I would even walk outside and see what was going on. But I heard him revving up his vehicle. And I guess the reason why he was revving up his vehicle was because he was stuck out there trying to collect his... drugs or whatever that he collects out there like i said the mail the mail master the the postmaster has been steadily using that facility over there knowing that no one has been living there for going on four years and i've been watching it and it wasn't just the federal postmaster that was doing it but it was uh uh, UPS and FedEx and everybody else. Here we are out here in the middle of Ten Buck Two. There ain't supposed to be no uh, mail delivered there. Whenever there ain't nobody living there, there's nobody that's been living there. Every now and then there may be a drug dealer 
that lives there. But after they figure out who I am, they're not going to live there for much longer because they're no because they know that I'm going to hold some sort of a uh, surveillance on them out here because of their illegal drug activity that I get no support from the judicial system in this county. A matter of fact, we got punished. We got openly punished because we was viewing inappropriate behavior either with children or with people with hostile attitudes or with illegal activity going on pertaining to drugs. We got, David and I, we got penalized. We got punished by the judicial system in this county, by the, by the sheriff's department and by Tommy Moore, the, the uh, judge here in Wakely County. Let me back this up now because I don't want to miss, I don't want my viewers to, to miss none of this for that that what's being said. This is important here. I'm sorry that I had to... Here Kim Jong-un fell apart. Like I said, I'm in the middle Chairman of trying Kim to shave. Chairman me last night is regardless, he's not going to do testing of rockets and uh, nuclear. Not going to do testing. So, you know, I trust him and uh, I take him at his word. I hope that's true. Is that trust deserved? Joining me now is NBC News national security and military reporter Courtney Kuby, part of the NBC team that broke the story, and Victor Cha, the director for Asian Affairs in President George W. Bush's National Security Council, and an MSNBC Korean Affairs analyst who did this work, the report on the symmetry uh, with his group at CSIS. Um, Victor, first to you, when you first saw this image, having tracked this dormant site, it had been dormant since August, now two days after the summit, this imagery, very clear imagery. What are you seeing here that alarms you? Well, so the first thing, Andrew, is to emphasize the first point is that, you know, you pull down images every day or every, every time you get a clear shot to see what's going on. And there was really nothing happening at this place since August. After Kim promised Trump after Singapore that he wasn't going to do anything there. And then so it's really striking that only a couple of days after the summit, we see this activity opening uh, environmental shelters, doing maintenance on the railway transport structure, uh, doing work on the engine uh, on the rocket test stand. These are very clearly not simply maintenance activities. They're either meant as part of a process to actually start stacking a missile, but we don't know that yet. Or it could be just to send a message to Trump. Now, when you talk about opening the environmental shelter, you're talking about revealing the launch pad. Yeah, yeah, it's revealing the launch pad, and it's, it, again, it's not activity that you would undertake under a normal maintenance basis. I mean, we've, we've seen some trucks move around there before, you know, we've seen some construction equipment, but there was a flurry of activity that took place, you know, when we got, when we got these shots that really made everybody stand up and look. Now, you're also, you've reported in the past about, which we as well reported, based on largely your research and a lot of other imagery, that there were 20 other sites, undeclared sites. So Kim Jong-un has been cheating since Singapore. He's still expanding. He's still making nuclear fuel at Yangbyon, which he had agreed in Hanoi not to continue doing. But he still has these other undeclared sites. Right, right. Which yes. he has not given uh, notice to the U.S., as he said he would in Singapore. Right, to the U.S. or to the U.N. And the U.N. bans North Korea from possessing ballistic missiles or ballistic missile bases. And so, yes, we have been reaching, researching these 20 other bases that they have that don't appear to be part of any of the negotiations. The negotiations seem to be focused on Yongbyon and some uranium enrichment facilities. So, you know, there's a lot that North Korea does not declare that needs to be part of a definition of denuclearization. And Courtney Kuby, John Bolton has said now that uh, if Kim Jong-un does not begin to denuclearize, as promised, that they would even consider increasing the sanctions, not lifting the sanctions, as the president had been indicating. Yeah, that's right. We heard from him last night about that. He talked about these crippling sanctions that the U.S. has already levied on North Korea and said that, you know, if North Korea doesn't start to go forward with this vague agreement that they put that they made in Singapore at last summer that there would be potentially even more sanctions that the US could levy on North Korea uh, when we first reached out as you know last night we first when Victor and his group first came to us with this their amazing work their amazing research being done at, at by beyond parallel uh, we went to the White House and asked them about this and said you know what is your response to this and they Sarah Sanders the White House press secretary declined to comment on it talking about it being you know an intelligence matter saying she doesn't comment on intelligence 
But then today, when she was asked again about it by our own Kristen Welker this morning in the, in the White House driveway, she said that, you know, they're continuing to talk. So she, the diplomatic lane still seems to be open here. But, you know, Victor, who's sitting there, and his, his group are doing tremendous work exposing all of the things that North Korea continues to do despite the, this declaration that was made in Singapore last, summit, last summer to try to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. And of course, this tracks completely with what the intelligence community testified to, that Kim Jong-un is not prepared to give up his weapons, which he believes uh, is the key to the success and the survival of his regime, which, of course, the president then disagreed with, saying that the intelligence chief should go back to school. Victor, what are you looking for now? What's next on this horizon? So we want to see if there's more activity taking place, you know, what they're doing with the construction cranes, with these doors, if there's more movement. I mean, obviously, if they're starting to stack a missile, that would be alarming, but we don't see anything like that. But yet. what are you looking at elsewhere in North Korea? So we are give us a, a so, yeah, we are what kind of detective work you're doing. Yeah, so we're looking at other sites. You know, there's sites that are, some of the sites that we've talked about are well known. Some of them are not so well known. And so we fingered a couple that we're trying to push forward on, if we can get more imagery and get good analysis on it. So there's more to come on this. And, and um, the, you know, the important thing is, I mean, you've been covering this issue. You know this so well. The most discouraging thing is the North Koreans seem to be behaving the way they've always behaved, despite the fact that they've had two meetings with the American president, something that they've wanted for 60 years. That's the most discouraging part of this. And just very briefly, Courtney, what is the significance of a decision barely announced in, a, in an email Saturday afternoon? that they are definitely canceling those joint military exercises. Um, the Pentagon has always said that those were important for readiness. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, I've been covering the Pentagon and the military for about 14 years, and in that time I can't tell you how many times I have heard about the, the critical nature of these exercises that the U.S. and South Korea do twice a year, the, for interoperability between the force, for readiness and whatnot. Uh, what's, it's not a surprise that they decided not to go forward with these large-scale exercises because President Trump has now talked about them being provocative. If, in fact, the U.S. military and South Korea would go forward with them, well, then wouldn't that be then considered an act of provocation against North Korea now that the president has spoken about it that way? Courtney, thank you so much for your reporting. Victor, as always. My pleasure. Thank you. And coming up, billions. Michael Bloomberg bowing out of the 2020 race, vowing instead to throw his money. Korea do twice. This is ever so sad in watching these evolving, escalating events that are materializing before the whole world pertaining to North Korea. Um, it's obvious that because they didn't get their way, they're retaliating, and the way that they're retaliating is by once more showing their ignorance in front of the world on a world stage. Um, they have gotten caught once more in their immoral actions of what they are planning to do towards violating any type of pre-agreement that they had with the United States government. These people are in a mindset, a mission, similar towards the people that I've been dealing with that owns the piece of property over here across the road towards wanting to bring torment, humiliation, and aggravation into innocent people's lives. David and I made a telephone call to the Sheriff's Department within the first six months of me living here in 2014 to the Sheriff's Department in Dresden, Tennessee, expressing to them about the old Willis house up the road here, how that David Willis had been manufacturing meth and the meth lab blowed up upstairs. You know what I got for the reward of turning in probably one of the biggest ex-drug dealers that used to live in this area? The reward that I got was that Derek Coble come to my house knocking on my door asking me if I was still on my meds. Asking me 
if I was still on my meds. After trying to expose various people in this area, those who was acting inappropriate in front of their children and abusing their wives, abusing each other, and abusing their children, what did, what type of reward did, did we get? First of all, I got a dead brother out of the deal because he couldn't handle all the pressure around here of the drug culture, the the uh, sorcery type behavior that was going on. And secondly, I got arrested and charged for stalking because I was trying to lead people to the Lord over here. In the meantime, I sat back and watched a federal post office service steadily dropping off packages and envelopes of a home that didn't have a single person living over there. I'm going to say, for the past four years, that place may have been occupied, and, and I'm stretching the imagination, I'm trying to be conservative with the figure that I'm going to give, it may have, in the past four years, had residency of four different families in the whole span of a whole year out of the four. Out of the four. Now, in... That four-year span that I've been here, since back here in 2014. And I hate to get off of this because this was the initial thought pattern that I had towards wanting to issue out to my viewers of the seriousness that's going on pertaining to a, a crazy man that is trying to, I guess start a nuclear holocaust as far as bringing the world to its knees with Armageddon. They have destroyed property here, vandalized my stuff, but I want you to look at this. This is the postmaster's tracks beginning right there and going from there all the way into there. And like I said, this house has been evacuated of anybody not living there that I don't even know if it's it's. I don't even think it's decent for children to live in. I know I've seen that door knocked off the hinges three or four different times, David and I. But you don't run a track like this day after day after day, year after year after year, without wallowing some sort of track like that. Now, I have recently closed my services down, and look at the difference. And I've been living here for a whole four years. See what I'm saying? Postmaster ain't supposed to be running here. There's not supposed to be even an advertising article dropped off here. Right up the road at 430 Beach Grove Road. I couldn't tell you the mail that I have received there at 430 Beach Grove Road. One reason was because I diverted my mail from this post office, from, from this point, from over there, because I felt like that it would be more difficult for them to steal the mail out of my mailbox if it was over there on that end of the property versus over here on this end of the property. Because there's two different roads here, there's two different addresses here. Even though I own both pieces of the property. But I couldn't tell you the amount of mail that I have received from not only David Jeffrey Jackson, that's been dead now, going on two years, my brother, but James Robert Jackson, that's been dead now for ten years. He gets stuff from co-op. 
He gets stuff from the military. He gets stuff from various uh, finance committees wanting him to sign up on various uh, credit cards and etc. Right there. Gets dropped off there every day. Just like he's still living, breathing. That's where a lot of your voter fraud comes from. They find out these people that are still active with the mail carriers, even though they're dead, and you go up to the voting booth and you sign their name in, just like they're the ones that actually voted for the candidate. Donald Trump, in a lot of his things that he says is true, pertaining to the system being rigged and this country being corrupt. A lot of stuff that he talks about is true. It really is. And it's really sad. And I would have never thought in a million zillion years that I would have come back in 20 and 14 and experienced such agonizing, hostile, violent behavior. And to think that the judicial system, the courts here in Weekly County, as well as Kenton, O'Brien County, could have cared less about David and I's well-being living on this property, regardless whether it was 291 Thompson Road or 430 Beach Grove Road. These people have brought an approach upon to society, upon to this nation. And that's the reason why we're seeing great horror befall upon to this nation pertaining to floods, fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, um, too much rain, not enough rain, uh, all these other catastrophes that continue to keep hitting us is because of all the unjust do that's happening here upon to this country. Because God is a just God and a righteous God, and he's not going to put up with this type of behavior, even at the expense of having to bring penalty to the innocent because of the guilty. That's the way God's system works. God gets those who he's after one way or the other. And if he don't get them in this lifetime, he gets them in the lifetime to come. I promise you, they will not escape condemnation that's coming to them because of what that they have done here. Just like North Korea. North Korea will not escape towards what it's uh, trying to pull over, over the wool of not only the American people's eyes, but, but over the world's eyes in regard to them doing what they're doing because the whole world has satellite infantry uh, technology and they can literally uh, they can literally see a pebble on the ground they can literally take this Folgers uh, coffee can here that I throw out this morning because I'm out of coffee and they can literally read the writing on that can up in space two miles they can read the writing on even that top of that little sun or whatever you want to call it right there on the top of Folgers. They have no earthly idea who they're dealing with and what they're going to do. They're going to cause destruction to their own people because of a madman. And unless they form a coup within their own party to dismantle that type of behavior, they're going to cause the whole, the whole party to be punished on account of it. And I, like I said before, and I'll say again, I'm really, really surprised that China hadn't intervened towards trying to stop them. And I guess the reason why is because they're probably afraid that it's going to cause some sort of an uproar. And the next thing you know, there'll be a, a civil war or some sort of a war right there on their own, own personal home front pertaining to their border in which I just got to listening to a while ago. And yes, the immigrants, the illegal immigrants that are steadily flowing over here into America has gotten worse, has gotten very much worse on the southern border. So once more, we've got problems on every end. The Bible is fulfilling itself towards perilous times, perilous times, perilous times. Perilous times ain't coming. Perilous times is here. People need to wake up. Me and David was on to these people long ago towards how that they, it's a buddy-buddy system. 
People go to church every day, but lie. Could care less about the truth. They don't want the truth told because it's embarrassing to them. Well, we'll see how embarrassing it is whenever you have missiles flying over and mushroom clouds forming and skin literally falling off of people's bodies because of nuclear radiation. Then we'll be too late for any truths, for any peace. The white flag syndrome will be over with at that time. Then we're talking about doom and gloom to humanity. Good luck to all of us. Good luck to each and every one of us. Because there's no doubt, whenever I come back here to my home town, to my homestead that rightfully belong to not only myself, but to David and the rest of the family, I basically come home to hell. Good luck to all of us. really surprised he didn't come by here laying down on the horn. I think he's finally realized that whenever he honks the horn that loud that other neighbors depending upon which way the wind's blowing can hear it too as well. So I think he might have wisened up towards not coming down here and laying down on the horn. But then again he don't care. You know whenever somebody's 70 years old that's basically uh looking towards an easy way out, hoping that Juby would have the, the uh, bendacity of going ahead and taking him and his family out. He don't care about his family because he knows that if I was a, a hooligan, if I was a, uh, a coyote, if I was a drug dealer or whatever, I would have done already stopped this uh, towards... Uh, becoming violent but he knows because of who I am that he can steadily rag and rag and rag and and continue to to uh, to see how far that he can go with me provoking him and his family good luck to all of us and may have God mercy, have mercy on all of us.
who are striving towards a righteous, holy lifestyle. God bless, and God bless America.